I is this not working? There we go. That was weird. Okay. So we want to do this. What up, noons? Wait, what, what? What up, Angel? Let's go. It's from probably Eduardo. Is it even possible to roll under a thousand? Yeah, it should be. Technically, it's just as rare as any other number. Um, okay. Yo, what's up, Boak? How are you, man? Happy New Year. Haven't, uh, haven't heard from you in a while. How you been? I was planning on starting streaming a lot earlier, but I accidentally fell asleep on my couch for like four hours earlier. Heads down with some work stuff. Nice. <clears throat> All right. So I've decided against automatically opening the browser for a couple reasons. Instead, we're gonna list next steps. So to do that, I actually wanna go back over here and where was this? I want to crib this basically. And we're going to make a component like that. And <laughs> let's just write a function, I guess. Let, um, next steps and this is going to take configuration we'll say this is going to be a configuration doc t uh and this is oh, i'm in our fucking reason file and then here we'll say let's do an old slash slash and then we'll return a unit and Let's do something like we did for um, the web app where we return this string where it's J string literal not terminated. Why not? There we go. How do we want to build up this string? I mean, we could just use a giant match. We could also do... We could also build this into the configuration object. So let's start here and we'll say, um, this will be next steps, colon. And then we need, um, uh, 
Let's pull up our um, configuration file. So let's get a uh, let's get our node package manager. So at node package manager uh, stir equals configuration dot node package manager. Yep. Uh, should that not that should work right? It'd be node JS. process process dot npm user agent to string what's this because it's package spelled out. Okay, we got that. Um, we'll get directory string equals um, if configuration directory no equals dot Just do this the easy way. So we'll jump in here and we'll say we're going to switch on a string value and we'll say that if it's dot, we don't need to change directory and we can do that. Otherwise, um, uh, we'll get the directory, I guess, and we'll say, I guess we didn't need to do that. The string will be format.sprintf and then that will take a function and that'll be um... Oh, Purple Elf just raided us? Thank you for the raid, Purple Elf. Super, super appreciate ya. How was your stream? What up, raiders? Shout out to purple elf functions describe the world. I'm doing quite well we're getting really close to being able to release a 1.0 version of the command line tool I'm working on called create uh, melange app functions uh, which I can probably demonstrate the in the chat right now if we go over here and we go to our CMA testing hey Allison uh, so if we do Functions create the launch app and we'll say my super world. cool app, we'll get this nice thing. We'll do some dependency checks. Do we want to write in ReasonML or OCaml? We'll say OCaml. Uh, will this be a React app? Sure. Uh, let's use Vite. We'll initialize Git and we'll do npm install. We're not going to initialize the OCaml tool chain just because it takes a couple minutes to uh, compile everything. So we'll just run through the wizard. We go through all this. We're gonna fix up this. This is mostly debug logging right now. Um, tonight, we're finishing up some last components, making some of this prettier, writing some documentation, and then publishing at least a beta, hopefully. Um, so this is the whole app. So it generated a app for us. So if we look, it should say my super cool app. We change into there. 
We should have a directory. We have stuff staged. We have files that got templated out for us. Um, our package JSON. Oh yeah, we love some alkaline trio. Yeah, so this has been like a solid month of work on this and we're really, 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 really close to releasing. Yeah, my, uh, my dot files uh, are really well commented. So if anyone's looking for some inspiration, uh, you can go check my dot files. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be working on tonight is kind of some last, uh, last stretch features, some documentation, trying to get um, all of uh, MPX working to install it, BunX and PMPM DLX to work. Um, yeah, and hopefully we're gonna start getting some TypeScript and JavaScript people uh, an easy path to starting learning OCaml Functions and reason ML. Describe the world. Thank you for the follows, y'all. Super appreciate it. Again, thank you, Purple Elf, for the raid. Okay, so let's jump back to our editor. And right now, um, I should also say to the folks that just raided, we're taking a ton of inspiration from Create T3 app. So if we do MPX Create T3 app, we do this. Um, we're really going for a nice developer experience, like or not developer experience, UX, um, like this, as you can probably tell. Uh, we'll do no, no. And the part we're working on right now is essentially building up this uh, based on the configuration. So uh, yeah, this little bit right here is what we're working on inside Create Melange app right now. <laughs> so if we get, um, if the current directory is just dot, we're already in our project directory. Otherwise, we want to say uh, change directory into percent %s, which will be, uh, we're not gonna do pattern matching for the whole list because it just get messy, but we're gonna do pattern matching on each of the individual components. Like for example, like this npm install, if the user chooses to have the wizard run npm install for them, they're not gonna have to do that. Same with uh, git init. Um, so we're just kind of go through and pattern match on specific piece, pieces of our configuration struct and write the, the strings there. What up, dev dad? Oh, we're cooking. So this will be directory. And we'll do that. And next we will say, we're gonna want a new line on all of these. So let's add a line break there. So we've got our node package manager string. Uh, we detect what uh, node package manager the user is using. This is actually pretty cool. Um, so if a user runs everything with bun, we can detect that or with yarn or PMPM or just straight up node. Um, so we can like give messages that actually put their actual, actual package manager in the string rather than just like defaulting to NPM, which I think is pretty delightful. Um, so next up, uh, I want to get this equal over here. So this is our configuration struct. These are basically all the stages, um, all the information we collect, um, while we're setting things up. So we need to have one for npm install. So we'll say let install, we'll say, uh, what do we wanna call this? Node package manager install. And this will be another switch and we'll just say Nope, that's not what we wanted. Come on, Copilot. That's getting closer. Um, is this a polymorphic variant? Yes, it is a polymorphic variant. Uh, so we'll just give that a back tick. We'll give that a back tick, and then we'll just say put a capture all in here, and just like assert false, so we get some better errors in here.
All right, what's this unhappy about? Actually, this isn't what we want to match on. We want to match on if um, configuration, we don't even need to match here. Well, we can, I, I prefer switch statements. Um, switch and we'll say configuration dot, not this one. Initialize NPM, I think. And we'll say that, and we'll just put a true. I don't know how that happened. I changed a bunch of my key bindings recently when I switched to Neo or uh, to Tmux, and I'm still not 100% used to it. So bear with me here. All right, so that's not the right condition, but it's getting closer. So initialize npm as a bool, true. Install the package manager should be a string. I don't know why this is upset. So this expression has type string, but an expression was expected of type unit. That would make it seem like, ah, oh, we don't need that. Oh, it went to a ternary? Okay, sure. What up, Coppinger? Shout out to Coppinger. He's the fucking man. One of my favorite streamers. I wonder if I, I don't think I can shout out two people at once. I should have shouted out Dev Dad too. Yeah, I have to wait another minute before I shout you out. <clears throat> oh, it's a cook fest. We got all my favorite people here. I love it. All right, node package manager. So if we want to initialize NPM, we actually don't need to do, this is flip-flopped. So let's um, do this and then we'll do that. Because if initialize package or if initialize NPM is true, that means during the scaffolding process, we already ran NPM install. So we don't, um, we don't actually have to do that. I, um, Yarn install is not the command, is it? This is going to be annoying. Um, node package manager. I'll say this is install. And instead of this, Hmm. Yarn is the odd one out, which is annoying. I did not see Meta's PR. Oh God. Oh boy, here we go. Perfectly polished read me. Okay, not really, but I opened a PR. It's not quite right, uh, but <laughs> I appreciate Meta's effort. Oh, this is for contributing. I see, I see. Disregard. I don't think we need... Why do we need the... Prepend. Oh, that's because I didn't get around to that. Okay, this is a good start. Um, perfectly polished read me. I love Meta. Oh, uh, this is such an annoying. I hate that Yarn doesn't do Yarn install. It's just Yarn. 
So we're going to switch. So now we'll get this. Now we'll keep this. And then we can say, um, We can pipe this to a function. Where we match one if it's a yarn. We just say yarn. Hold on, let's get this fixed up here. Uh, this will actually get um, package manager. And I think we can just do this to start. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so in here, we'll say um if package manager equals yarn then we just return else we'll do that this will be a uh, package manager else it'll be um package manager functions describe the plus world. plus space install because yarn is a special snowflake okay so that will work better we can get rid of this now delete to the slash do that okay And then we can say, um, let get init equals. I'm, I lost my code complete here. All right, let's see if that fixed it. Change this and we'll say configuration. Yep. Drop down. That looks about right. Get in it. And then we need to look at the OCaml toolchain. The OCaml toolchain one's going to be really obnoxious. I might have to try that, Patrick. Thank you for the follow, Jack Harn one and Boo Real, and AkuXW, and Curie Fury, and Salver Gem, and Hiker C. Appreciate all of you. So we'll say OCaml in it, dual chain in it, and this will be, yep. And then we can just say, uh, let's start with this. Whoops. So if we initialize the tool chain, we do nothing. Otherwise, we need to say, this is gonna be a tricky one. This will be like, um, what is the order of operations here? It would be opam switch create. We should actually just go um, vSplit here and go to scaffold and what do we do here we do an install that's going to generate our opam file which we should all do every single time anyway so we don't need to do that 
we're going to do these three. So we'll say opam switch create. Yeah, we'll gank this. In fact, we can probably just even reference that. It'll be engine <laughs> dot or core. I think we already have core open, so we should be able to say opam dot. Do I not have opam exposed? Uh, let's go export those. module opam equals opam and now we should have are we even building yeah we are building okay should be able to say now opam dot um create switch dot name and that should give us our yep okay and we'll say plus plus. Actually, we should do format dot sprint f. And this will be percent s and a new line. Not that. And then we'll do a comma and we'll say opam dot create switch dot name. And then we'll say percent s slash n the next bit uh what did we say the next bit was installed dev depths take that one opam dot install dev dependencies dot name and then we get another s next stage in the process is dune build yeah so we'll probably have to add that to core 2 as an export Oh, we do export Dune already? Okay. So we'll say dune.build.name. I think that's everything. We create the switch, we install the dev dependencies, and we build. Yeah. Okay. And then let's move that after. Okay. So then we'll return a string. We can say, um, directory, and then, see you, Dev Dad. Have a good night. And download pieces, Roam, uh, OCaml toolchain in it. And then
Let's see what this spits out. So this just generates a string. Yeah, okay. So down here, we can get rid of this effect. And we'll say, uh, we can get rid of this configuration string. And instead, we'll say configuration. And we'll pipe that into next steps. All right, let's see what that does. <laughs> All right. That got close. I'm not gonna lie, that got pretty freaking close there. All right, so that's a good starting point. Uh, we don't need this. We don't need that. Uh, we'll just call this next steps. And then um, we want to format this string a little bit better. Can I put in a, that? I guess we could come in here and we'll have that. I wonder if we can do this. All right, let's see what that gives us. I shouldn't have done npm install, whatever, that's fine. What up, Absinthe, how you doing? Welcome to stream. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Okay, that looks pretty good, chat. Mine is this npm install. I must have missed a new line. We're probably going to want to put each of these strings into a component. Com fucking pooters. Bum, bum, bum. Fracking yarn, yo. Why does yarn have to be a snowflake? Uh, let's throw in a spacer right here for now. We're going to make this look better in a minute. But uh, for the moment, we're just going to do this. I want to get this working, and then we're going to do something like uh, T3 app does. If I still have this in my history, I don't. Um, but we're going to make this look prettier. Blow out my brain. That's, uh, I like that phrase, over-caffeinated collective of autonomous misfit life casters. Uh, you know what? I am making my own uh, spec here, all right? All right? I just woke up from like a four hour nap. I'm only one man. So after we do these, our beautiful string here. It's going to have, um, uh, we got to throw in get init. Get underscore init. I don't even know why I'm writing this because I'm just going to get rid of this in about five minutes, but uh, then it'll be change directory, and then we run um,
Is this Hollywood Undead? Definitely is. Change directories. Oh, we should, um, Yeah, we need to um, figure out a way to get the right path there. But the rest of this looks pretty good. Minus, we need to put a line break there. Functions describe the world. So let's jump back and we can fix that first one pretty easy by doing... Um, Uh, node.js.path and this will be um, actually you know what this doesn't even have to be directory this will be configuration.name that'll work um, okay And it was uh, the Dune build that didn't have the new line on it. Yeah, right there. That last one doesn't. Slash n. Trying to make the booty drop. Paint off one stop. Trying to make the booty drop. So that spacer didn't work. So down here, we need to, We should put a gap. Gap equals one. I keep going too fast to this. No, no, no. Clear. All right. Next steps. Change directories into test. Run npm install. Opam switch create. That looks good. Opam install. Ocaml. Blah blah blah. Opam exec. Doom build. Get init. npm run dev. Oh, we want the commit now. We'll copy this one like verbatim. Why can't I freaking yoink? Annoying. All right, let's actually turn this into a component now that we have basically everything. Um, let's run two of my core workers use code as their terminal multiplex. What? <laughs> I agree with Antonio. Actually disgusting.
how do we want to do this? This is like kind of obnoxious to handle. Strings suck. Like we we really want that and then we just get rid of like that one there. <laughs> And then we come here, we say slash in. It's gross, but it's gonna spit out kind of the right thing. The other thing we could do is switch. You should try ghosty, Antonio. Everyone needs to get on the ghosty trade. Is it slash T for a tab? Is that how that works? That's way too far. Why not just put initial commit and then get init? Won't you always need to commit if you need to init? We'll need to commit any, oh, I guess. Functions describe the We'll world. always want to print this line because if um, we didn't run get init, oh, maybe, let me go read the code again. Regardless or not, if we print get init, we'll always need to do initial commit. Because um, if we did initialize git, we don't commit for them. Uh, we stage everything. Thank you for the follow, YT Displant. Appreciate you. Let's just do that. And then we could do like that. Maybe we get rid of the new lines that we control it ourselves. And then we come down here and we say directory will be a new line. But it's like only a new line if it's not empty, which is the annoying part. We did, we're up to 2015 followers. We made it. Thank you to everyone that follows me and hangs out with me. I super appreciate all of you. You guys are truly the reason I do this. The sense of community streaming makes. Chef kiss. Now hail the hail. There we go, chat. 
That looks so much better. Now let's try some different uh, deviations of this. Let's say we choose to install the, uh, well, let's say we do this, this, this. We'll initialize git, we'll run npm install, but we're not gonna do that. We have an extra space in there and we don't need npm install. All right. Package manager install, package manager string. We want to say um, if This is like backwards. That's actually pretty close. That might actually be right. Sounds like Wii music. That should fix that problem. And then the other place we had a problem was after opam exec. After get in, all right, let's see how that does. Yeah, I don't know where that percent's coming from. I have no idea how to get rid of that percent. Literally no idea. It seems like it's coming from um, uh, ink. I just, I, I no literal clue right now. I mean, we can try to just like throw in an extra new line at the end, but like, I don't know where it's coming from. I haven't put the time into figuring it out yet. So opam switch is now indented too much and git commit is indented too much. Why is... <laughs> right. This is gonna be annoying. You guys know why I use Batman as my initial commit message? Anyone know why? I know a couple people do this. I know I'm not the only person to use Batman as the original commit message. It's because Batman has no parents. I always use Batman. I saw somebody do Batman one time and they were like, yeah, it's because the initial commit has no parents. And I was like, oh my God. That's amazing.
All right, so now we have to go back and add new lines and spaces to all these because it's annoying. Actually, we could just end it. Yeah, we could put it on the... No, we should put it on the... Real talk, we're gonna use initial commit though. Should be close. Oh my God, of course. That looks good. Now let's, um, that actually looks like exactly what we want. Let's try um let's try running it with bun. So note we just ran it with bun instead. So everywhere we see npm we should see bun. We'll say bun reason yes what was that yes wrong 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 <laughs> it works if you, when you run it with bun x, it seems to work. Which we'll test that later, because I think bun x, mpx, um, uh, what's the other one called? Um, pmpm, they inject an environment variable um, that we pick up on. Like if we did PMPM, like if we did that. You'll see that this one asks about PMPM install, see? So we know that's at least working in our published alpha version. All right, I'm pretty happy with, let's rename this the next steps instead of complete. Um, that'll be the word, find C, that'll be that. And what does uh, T3 app do here? We say the project name was scaffolded successfully. And then we give next steps. I think we want to copy this too. Guys, I have my first interview that I've had in a year and a half on Monday. And I'm nervous as shit. I haven't interviewed for so long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I did not quit Antonio. I, uh, Scollum is folding at the end of March. So the company gave us a heads up that, uh, we will be employed until March 31st, but we should start looking. I got quitted. Yeah. I found out yesterday morning and I've been fortunate to have a lot of, um, amazing people in my network. And, um, I actually reached out to, uh, Dave about potentially working on Melange and joining Ahrefs. <laughs> you just posted the link to Ahrefs. Yeah, actually, Antonio, we should, uh, we should chat. I might hit you up, um, on discord either after this or tomorrow to talk about exactly that. What kind of work do I do? Uh, I have 10 years of experience writing JavaScript, TypeScript, React, and Node professionally. Uh, I have about a year and a half experience of Golang. I have about a year and a half experience of OCaml and ReasonML. Um, pretty much a full stack web dev. I would love to get another role working on functional programming languages. I don't really care what, um, but yeah. I've got a couple leads. I've got one really exciting one. And like I said, I already started talking to uh, Dave about um, Ahrefs. So we'll see, we'll see where that goes. So now let's actually make a complete, uh, actually we can just add a text component down here. Come in here, we'll add a fragment for now. Probably gonna need a box, but. And then we'll say text. That's not quite what we want. Whoa, what the fuck was that, Tmux? This will be configuration.aim. And we'll say, um, what did, no, that should be, So this should be pretty damn close to what we want. Nice, Sea Bear. That's awesome. How was uh? How's your experience been with OCaml so far? Um, all right. Let's do one more test run here and see what happens. CMA, uh, we'll say, I don't even know, OCaml. Do OCaml, yes, but pack. No, no, no. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Hopefully, I, I fortunately got to skip. The, the company I'm interviewing with at Monday right now would probably be my first or second choice, depending on if I could uh, work on Melange full time. That would be amazing. Um, that would probably be my first choice, depending on salary. 
Um, but the company I'm interviewing with on Monday would, it's, it's up there with places I would love to work. So, and I have a good idea of what to expect from the technical interview and it's based in application rather than like, you know, leak code stuff. So I, sh as long as I don't choke or stumble or, you know, have a bad day, um, I should, is it okay mail? <laughs> it is not okay mail. Who developed Melange? Uh, well, Nunes, the person above you, and Montero, Antonio, is the person who initially created Melange. <laughs> Some rando. <laughs> How are you supposed to know? You couldn't have known. Antonio's the man. He has single handedly forked the entirety of the O'Campbell networking stack and uh, is just a legend. And I'm very thankful for Antonio for helping me learn OCaml, for writing Melange. Dude's a homie. Mm. Classic typo. You didn't do shit. Yeah, right. Look at that beautiful typo, chat. I'm so good at typing. Is scaffolded even a word? It's gotta be a word, right? Scaffolded. Right, that's gotta be a word. Come on. Yeah, it is. We just fixed that. All right, let's try this again. Let me save CMA reason. Typo again. Classic. Scaffold. Scaffold. Now we're missing a space here. Regression. All right. That will be that. Let's commit this. Um, and this is issue 11, add complete plus next steps components and SL push. Yeah, I haven't pushed. I haven't pushed uh, to npm in a while. Oh, Antonio, I accidentally ganked uh, melange.js on npm. Uh, I'm happy to turn that over to you um, when you guys need it, or if you just want it now. Uh, but uh, that that npm package is in the the melange pocket um, for safekeeping. Okay, sounds good, Antonio. Thank you. I meant to uh, I meant to publish to mel.js, and I had scaffolded it with npm init melange.js, so that's how I ended up with it. But it's good that somebody in that R circle kind of has that. Um, but yeah, when you guys need that, I can definitely just transfer ownership. Okay. So we got that. I think we're just gonna start polishing shit now. You have the Melange org? Sweet, yeah. I'd even be totally cool with transferring Create Melange app under the Melange org, if that's something you guys would uh, find valuable.
Um, let's see here. What is our next issue? Uh, let's filter to our 1.0 labels. We did this, this one's done. Ooh, I should do that. We should add one more thing. Melange.re. I don't, I just want this. So let's um, jump back into Vim. And down here, we'll add another text item. And we'll just say like, um, we'll say, um, visit the melange docs at HTTPS slash slash. I think we can, I think ink has like a URL component that will make this clickable. Um, let me go check that. Ink. Ink link. All right, so let's install npm ink link quick and we will write a quick binding for that. <laughs> I'm gonna need to go top off my beer here in a second, but let's write our ink, ink link binding quick. I love this band so much. They're so good. Dwellings, stellar. Ink, and then we'll add link.ml, save that, jump into here, and let's quit out of that, make this full screen, and let's just jump into transform will be an easy one. Let's copy that, go back to here. And we'll say external make will be, um, what's it take? It takes a URL, URL, which is a string. This will be at, at mel dot module ink link. And this will be, um, link. I think that's all we got to do. Oh, it needs children too. Children, which is react element. Did he move? Did I move? Did who move? Who moved? Oh yeah, I remodeled, which I got another, um, I'll have shelves on this wall uh, in the next, I think on the 15th and then you guys can't see it, but the wall in front of me is gonna get wooden slats. And there's a door over to my left over here that goes into a bathroom. And that door is gonna be completely hidden. Uh, so there'll be a hidden door under the slats. I'm like, I'm super stoked for it. It's gonna be so cool. But yeah, my desk um, used to be against this wall over here and there's windows right here. So I used to be against windows. So you guys were looking at this wall, which has a closet over here so yeah, I've switched stuff up. I painted, got a new couch, new lamp, lights. Are you also building a bunker? Cannot confirm or deny. So we have our link now. Uh, we have to export it from ink. So let's say module link equals a link, sneaky link. 
link. Okay, and then we can go back to uh, component.read. And in here, uh, we'll have, so we throw a link in. And we come over here and we say link and we'll say slash link and this needs a URL and the URL equals a yoink. Oh, that needs to be string. Um, so we'll do that. That'll be that. React.string. Dumb. All right, let's see if that worked. Do you keep your Tesla Optimus inside the hidden door? I do. I do keep my Tesla Optimus over there. Yeah, right. I would never buy, I shouldn't say never, but I don't like spending a lot of money on cars. I've been driving a, uh, what the fuck do I drive? I drive a Hyundai Tucson 2019 and I'm planning on driving that for quite a while. I think the next time I will potentially buy a car is in 2027 or 2028 when Toyota releases their solid state batteries. And if they release a, um, uh, a forerunner with the solid state batteries, I might buy one of those then. Yo, I, <laughs> if I was stupid rich, I would buy a McLaren, but I am not stupid rich. <laughs> See, the problem is, Antonio, is that I have three dogs that I have to, you know, somewhat commonly transport to Pennsylvania from North Carolina. I don't want to put three dogs in the back of a Model 3. As humorous looking as it would be. Camping mode? Is that a real thing with a Model 3? Law. Does the tank come with the car? All right, let's see if this actually makes a clickable link. It's probably not going to um, inside Tmux because Tmux is dog water. Um, but tent sold separately. A typo. There's a typo. <laughs> I'm gonna need like, oh shit. Oh, is this from you? No. This is, what is this? Merry Christmas from Emily. From Emily? Yeah. She dropped off Christmas. No, get down. She dropped off Christmas stuff. I got a mushroom candle. Look at how cool this is. Wait, get, get, get off the desk. Look at it. Show chat. 
It's a candle. Oh, oh she got me a mushroom. gift card to black and white coffee. Let's go chat. <laughs> I want black and white coffee to sponsor me. Look at how cool that candle is though. I'm so excited. Oh, that's a candle? It's a candle. How I does mean, it even burn? I'm never going to burn it, but what do you huh? mean? How does it burn? The wick's at the top. Where's the wax? The whole, don't scratch it. The whole thing is wax. That's wax? Yeah. What? Why, why do you think you're scratching it and it's coming off? I've never seen anything like this. It's What are the amazing. other two floofs? So we've got Bodhi. I don't know if we can see Bodhi here. Oh, wait, hold on. So this is Bodhi, <laughs> and then Winnie's on the floor Winnie, over here. Winnie. Winnie, come. Come here. Winnie, look, you want this? Come here. So the normal golden is Winnie, and then the Baxter. small creature that Baxter. looks like it caused COVID is Baxter. What are you doing? I see you. Those are the floofs. Yep, golden floof, second golden floof, and then a little floof. He's not even floofy. We have a chocolate lab named Luna. Oh, I love the name oh. Luna. That's a great name. Um, I'm going to come in and hang out. You got me another burr? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's figure out what we broke here because we're having skill issues. Always. So we put the link down here. <laughs> You've got a uh, name Padme, that's awesome. Justine, you wouldn't understand that reference because you've never watched Star Wars. Justine has never watched Star Wars. Tell me that's not a red flag. Or Lord of the Rings chat. Red flags. First of all, I do know the Padme reference. Sushi and ramen. What are, oh, what are the cute. names of the uh, trash kitties that my sister feeds? Uh, Crockpot. Crockpot. Chop suey. Chop suey. <laughs> Grim. Grim. What's the what she called the raccoon? Jeff. Jeff. So my sister feeds a bunch of kitties that hang out in a dumpster behind her gym, and uh, yeah, Crockpot, Chop suey, Grim, and then there's a raccoon that randomly like hangs out with the cats. She calls that one Jeff. Named after her boss. For the record, you gotta include that tidbit too. And Tony, you're killing me here. You've gotta watch these films. I'm not alone. I wonder if we don't put, um, we don't put the link inside of a text note and we just do something like this. Let's see if that works. Nope, still borked. Did I even screw up my bindings? Like we get a link. Oh great, thank you Reason. Takes children, produces a React element, ink link. We installed ink link. Ink link. Ink create melange app. So it should be good there. We call it link. Module React component. That all looks fine. And then we exported it from ink. And it's right there. What are we doing wrong, chat?
Ah, supported terminals. I'd assume it'd be fine. It has to fall back to text, I would think. Hi, what you do, I'm new. Uh, we are building a command line app with ReasonML, OCaml, and React. But welcome. What you do? Listen, Antonio, if you haven't watched this, actually all of chat, if you haven't watched this video, I don't care if you care about Zig or terminal emulators or whatever, this video is so good just from a pure like software engineering craftsmanship perspective. It is very, very good. Like I, Mitchell Hashimoto is like, he is someone I like kind of idolize in our industry. I think very, very highly of him. Yeah. I really encourage everyone to watch this video. I know it's long and I know it's Zig and terminal emulators and you might not care about it, but like put the domain aside, what Mitchell talks about in this video, just from a craftsmanship perspective for our industry is amazing. You sound like a boomer, Antonio. I have a I have a real life picture of Antonio right now. Ready? Here he is. <laughs> Zig looks really cool and um, he's really, really good at leading the project um, and bringing people along and everything's really well documented. Like I've never really written systems programming languages and I can even like kind of follow a bunch of the code base. It's really, really clean. Yeah, Mitchell Hashimoto has built a ton of very, very important software uh, that powers like the world. And he's a super nice guy. He was hanging out on stream actually the other day when I was working on configuring Ghosty. He's super nice. All right, let's see. We're going to try this a couple more times, but I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> Like, it seems like this should just work, but it doesn't. Did I write my binding incorrectly? I don't think. We already looked at our binding and it looked fine. I mean, we could go dump the binding into... Um, Children react element, we say it's a react element. Is it at at? That could be a problem maybe. I don't know, let's go look at something like that. No, it's at at. Everything seems fine. I don't see anything apparently wrong with this binding. All right, we're just gonna drop the link for now and we can add it when we rewrite the Minty. Oh, really? That's wild. His wife's an actress? 
That's baller. No, the the import's fine. Let's just try a single line of text. Actually, let's comment that out. We'll come down here and we'll just put that. I wonder if this isn't I wonder if this is a React 18 problem. Yeah, the external, the external looks fine. Um, here's the external. which seems okay to me. I don't see anything apparently obviously wrong with this. And it's the same as a bunch of my other externals. Like if we look at, um, it should be default. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Tricked me up twice in one day. Oh shit, that's not what we wanted. That would have taken six minutes to install the compiler. There it is. This isn't clickable because of that, but um, that is what we want. Okay. So that worked. Thank you for catching that, Antonio. Appreciate that. Dependencies. I I have a I know I have a depend. These are gonna. I'm getting rid of these. I was mostly using these for debugging, um, and we're gonna do something similar, I think. But um, They take up too much space, I think. And like, this doesn't really tell the user anything useful other than we're doing work. And a lot of these complete almost immediately. Like the only thing that takes a little bit is installing NPM and installing the OCaml toolchain. We have a ticket to clean up a bunch of this stuff and make it look prettier. Um, that's probably what we're gonna do next. Yeah. Damn, I should check that. Good catch though.
All right, that should be good there. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so do that. And now let's grab up that. A dash M add. Do we have a ticket for this? I feel like we have a ticket for this. Uh, no, it was part of this. Add link to docs and output. Should probably put that in the website version too. Oh, that's cool, absent. I meant to start streaming earlier, Bad Cop, but I fell asleep for like four hours uh, on the couch behind me by accident. It's true, can confirm. You, Bad Cop, you have the strangest sleep schedule of anyone I know. I can't wait to tweet tomorrow morning at Bun. I might even set up a bot just to tweet at Bun every day. Oh, you're sick, Nightshade? I hope you feel better, dude. The flu's gone now. I hope he's okay. Like, everyone's sick right now. Nate's sick. Nightshade's sick. Who else is sick? A couple people at work are sick. Okay, uh, the next ticket we want to tackle. If you fell asleep, obligatory question, do you have a window open? Uh, I do not have a window open because it's pretty cold today in Raleigh. What's the temperature? I'm going to end up doxing my address. I already do I doxed my cell phone number today by accident. Are you serious? <laughs> How yeah. did you do that? I pulled up my resume. <laughs> Dummy. It's a little chilly here. Can someone translate to European? Uh, I don't know what. It's like, uh, listen, I will sometimes open my window to help take care of CO2, but like, I'm not spending the like, $300 that everyone's spending on that monitor. What? All of tech Twitter has been buying these CO2 monitors and being like, oh, herp derp, my room is filled with CO2 and it's impacting my thinking. And the solution is just literally open a window for a little bit. Or get a bunch of plants. Or like Justine's office. She has about a bajillion plants. You create your own jungle. Listen, I've got a snake plant in here. I don't know if you can see it back here. I got a snake plant. Once I have shelves, I'll have some more plants back here on the shelves. Oh, Bodhi. Yo, what up, Alt F4? Bodhi. Let me give Alt L 4 a shout out here. Shout out. The Alt F4 is actually going to, a little spoiler alert chat. Um, we're going to start a a uh, hopefully weekly series for maybe a week or two or three where Meta and I are going to be on stream with Alt F4 learning how to use Nix. So everyone should go check out his stream and his content on YouTube if you're into Nix because it's very, very good and he's very entertaining. Meta's my favorite. We all know Meta's your favorite. I know. Next to Nightshade. No. It, Meta's my favorite. Uh, Nick's the package manager. I also just sent you a very cute picture. All right, so we'll close this issue. Okay. And now we'll go to labels, V1. Five more issues, chat. Let's start making our thing pretty.
Bad cop, once you work at Bun, you'll have to use Nyx. Uh, so bow, issue 14, QX styling. So the first thing we wanna do is probably render the create melange app as static, I think. I would like, I think, to have that shown the whole time. So we'll like, we'll do this in a section and we'll set like a timeout for like a second. And once this completes, we'll launch into the wizard and we'll keep the banner. And then when this is complete, we'll launch into whatever we refactored this to look like also with a timeout and still keep the banner static. So let's go in here. Yeah, I actually might need to buy and build a new computer soon, depending on if I end up keeping my, I don't know if <laughs> Skull, I don't know what Skullum's plan is to do with our laptops since the company's folding. Um, I would love to be able to keep my laptop and the uh, factory reset it, but either way, it'd be nice to have Nick's, whether I buy a new one or get to keep this one and just factory reset it and have all my dot files good to go. Where's our banner at? Should be in here, right? Yeah. Option is none configuration. So we're gonna do um, static. This has items. And we'll just create, no, we, I guess we don't really need that. We'll delete down to here, delete over to there. I watched a conference talk once where someone recreated Docker, all in Perl. I mean, obviously not all of Docker, but like the core features of Docker. <laughs> it's probably a one-liner. <laughs> they code golf Docker, Docker in Perl. See you, glitch bite. If you're streaming in the morning, I'll try to I'll try to catch you early. Also, Glitchbite has started streaming uh, Ocamel, so y'all should check him out. He streams a little bit before me in the mornings. <laughs> Was it System Docker PS? <laughs> What? She wants you to come with me to the meet and greet on Saturday. To that creepy guy. What creepy guy? Do you remember the creepy guy? No. From a while ago. Who I got. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll come along. Yeah. She needs your help. She. We're running recon. I saw uh, Pixel Hero refer to the bind infix operator as nerd arrows on Twitter, and I will exclusively be calling the bind infix operator nerd arrows from here on out. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Opal, Op Opalentile. Appreciate you hanging out.
So how do we want to do this? We almost want some state for the view, right? Let's add some state for the view. We'll say, um, let's say type will be step and this will be some variant and it'll be like um, M check and then it'll be uh, wizard scaffold and next steps, I guess, or complete or finished. And then we'll say we have some state, say let step, set step. And I'm just a slave. What's up? Step env check. Hey, stop. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Chat GPT integrated. So on M check, so we technically already have M check results pass. So surely we probably switch on that somewhere. Yeah. So we can probably rewrite a bunch of this. The programming language that I'm really excited about and really bullish about is Gleam. I don't think it's quite where I want it to be quite yet, but I am very excited about it. And um, probably next week, we're gonna get into playing with Gleam a little bit. Very excited about this language. We're actually gonna do some rust work on their LSP, I think. All right, so let's rewrite some of this. Uh, let's make a module v2 just to give ourselves some space. And we'll come in here and we'll gank this yoink in v2. We'll say paste that in, percent, delete that, jump to the bottom of the file, throw that in there. I don't think we need this. I don't know. I, um, I'm on vacation this week and, um, I took a meeting with my CTO and my CEO yesterday, despite being on vacation and they kind of, you know, broke everything down to me and, um, let me know I should start looking. And like, I have the utmost respect for my CTO or the leadership at my company. I think they're great. I just, you know, it's a startup and that's kind of the name of the game of startups. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, they gave us all a, a three month head up, heads up, um, her breath. <laughs> Listen, I still, Antonio, I still want to solve the problem of direct to consumer permanent life insurance. I think there is a real opportunity for that. But we'll see someday. So Gleam is like a different elixir, kind of. Um, well, yeah, I'd say I, I'd say that's probably a fair comparison. So Gleam is gonna have a syntax more akin to 
uh, C style languages or like Rust. And then it's going to have a Hindley Milner type system, which is like OCaml or ReasonML. Um, and it can compile to uh, Erlang IR or maybe just Erlang. I don't know how that works completely. Or it can compile to JavaScript too. And it sounds like they had plans to compile to native, which would be super sweet. So it's something I'm keeping my eyes on. I'm actually sponsoring the project and putting put my money towards it because I think it's really awesome. Um, but yeah, direct to consumer Medicaid gap insurance. Interesting. Yeah, I've uh, two years back to back, I've been at startups that haven't made it. So the company I'm interviewing at on Monday though is quite a established company. I don't want to jinx myself, so I'm not really gonna share where I'm interviewing at yet. But uh, if I land the job, I'm going to be very, very excited about it. I love startups. I do. I know there's inherent risk and it's stressful, but like I love the environment of startups, like having a ton of like influence and just something about the environment. I, uh, I thrive. Dang, then my guess is wrong on Discord. I'll tell you where I'm interviewing at on Discord, Antonio, one second. Yeah, I'm in, I'm interviewing to be a uh, bad cops intern, actually. Spoiler alert. Wait, can I do that? Bad cop, Justine wants to be your intern. I'll leave my cushy corporate job. We can do the interview live on stream. That would actually be a really funny uh, stream. You interviewing me for a bash internship, and I don't know like any bash other than struggling with ChatGPT. Chat Jeopardy. Bad cop wants me to tell you it's an unpaid internship. That's okay, because joke's on them. I don't know how to code anything. Justine's not a coder, so uh, it's probably good it's unpaid. <laughs> All right, are we in our V2 module? Let me look at my, yeah, okay. So we can like just nuke stuff in here. So we'll start on M check. It's initial on M check. We're just going to say, instead of rather pass, we'll say, um, this will say, should be, oops, that's not what I want. We'll say set step. will be, uh, we go from that to wizard. Step, 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 step.
So we go to the next step. We should prompt get. That's fine. Maybe we don't even need a step state. I think I'm overcomplicating this. I hate, uh, as cool as ink is, I don't think I would write another CLI in React. It just makes it more complicated. Okay. <laughs> so we only want to, we always want to render the banner. So let's move our banner up here. We'll put that here. And then we want to switch here. We probably want a second switch. Um, and we'll say, who could have predicted this? Listen, we're already planning a rewrite, bad cop. Okay, I get it. We're refactoring to native OCaml and Minty. I just need to get this initial version shipped because I'm too far down. Create Mahanj apps on cost fallacy, same thing, facts. Interesting uh, intro there. Uh, we'll give you a shot to stick around, uh, but uh, tread lightly. Well, there's uh, there's Functions that. Describe the world. Stop it, guys. No. Sorry about the dog chat. There is someone walking by the house talking very loudly. Hey. Yeah, the dogs got pissed at that message. They're like, fuck that guy. Gonna be a juicy unban request. <laughs> what happens when we complete the wizard? We get a configuration. Okay, so let's just throw a switch in here. This is gonna get so messy for a second. Oh, God, this is not gonna be fun to write. 
maybe we just do it up above and we say let underscore equals um, this and let's come in here. Step's not a thing anymore, right? Step's gone. Or maybe it's not. Let's just get rid of that. We don't need that. We have enough state already to derive the step. So we'll say um, we have M check result and we have one wizard complete, which will be configuration. Right, so we can derive that. And ah. Baxter, shut up, homie. No. Okay. That'll be react.null. And then we can start matching on our other cases. If we have none, we don't care about the configuration. Okay. We're going to render um, the M check component. And if we have some, and it's going to be a pass, but none on the configuration. Functions describe the we world. Say react null. Yep, and then we want to render some pass and some. We'll also say react null. just to get our cases planned out. Okay. Yo, <coughs> Baxter, knock it off, dude. No. You can go upstairs, you can put in the bedroom. Thank you for the resubscription, Ninja. Super appreciate you. So here we want to render the wizard then. Yoink. And now we'll go here. And then we want to render, we'll get our configuration. And in here, we render the last bit, which is this John. Yoink. Winnie, stop. Winnie. Paste that there. And then we can surround this entire block with brackets. Yoink that. And we'll just comment that for now. And then I think we can replace this entire block. So let's, uh, when we transition, let's set like little, like uh, maybe quarter of a, three quarters of a second timeouts. So when we finish our M check, let's say, um, hey, just that so global, the fuck? Damn. Set timeout. Hey Dylan. Hmm. Yeah. Stop your okay. I tossed both my slippers at her. Come here. Bed. Come here. Good girl. Relax. You're a good girl. I know. Thank you. Um, let's take a small Twitter break quick. Well, I'm calming my anxious golden down. Finished making hummus? Yeah, hummus is actually really easy to make. Um, have you ever made um, oven roasted chickpeas, nightshade? Like, 
You can take chickpeas and toss them in salt and cumin and smoked paprika, um, a little bit of oregano, uh, a little bit of MSG, and then roast them in the oven at like 375 for like 20 minutes with some oil, and it's so good. They get nice and crunchy, and you can just like, they're like snacking on peanuts. It's really good. Yo, I was super pumped with this image just spit out. This was sick. Oh, come on. You, you gotta you gotta get better hot sauce than Frank's Red Hot. There's so many better brands out there. Frank's Red Hot is pretty good, okay? You're basic, Justine. Sometimes, yeah. But it's fine. Okay. Um... Got that all working. We want to set a timeout and we'll just say, we don't need to really care about the timeout ID. So we can just do that. In fact, we can just do delete to J. We can pipe that to ignore. And in here we'll say, um, no. We'll take that and throw it in there. And we can copy this and then on, we'll throw this in here. We can yoink that and view in here, yoink that. Chalu is decent. Cholua, if you get the green Cholua and mix it with sour cream, MSG, and lime juice, it's so good. I used to make hot sauce, all right? Let me, let me, let me give you guys a tour of one of my past ADHD uh, obsessions. I got really into making hot sauce and growing peppers for like two or three years. Uh, so we're going to take a dive into this. So one year, my, my former significant other, uh, decided to buy me a, like one of the subscription boxes, to hot sauce. So I'd like get two or three hot sauces in the mail every month. And eventually I was like, why are we paying for this? It can't be that hard to make hot sauce. I love hot things. So I was like, I'll try to make my own hot sauce. I've never grown a plant before in my entire life. So I was like, I'm going to try to grow hot peppers. So this was my journey of growing my first plants ever. Uh, I was expecting only like two or three to live, but I had like 22 plants live. And it slowly just escalated like pretty quickly. Looked like I was growing marijuana in my backyard. <laughs> And uh, I got thousands of peppers and I made tons of hot sauce and hot shit. So I know all the, you guys would not believe the amount of drama that happens in the pepper growing community. It is unbelievable. You think people get pissed about like Tailwind and React server components? You know nothing, Jon Snow. The drama in the pepper growing community, unreal. 
so yeah, I did this for two or three years and uh, that was like a thing that I got like real into for a while. Marijuana would have been way more profitable for sure. I mean, it's basically the same process. I still have my grow tent, so I could still probably grow weed pretty easily. One M check on complete. We set a timeout there. Guess we don't even need these, right? Whoops. Let's run that. I saw like a news article today that the DEA was um, reviewing uh, marijuana as a Schedule One. Is that is that true? Winnie, stop chewing on your paws. Winnie. One complete. So we want to do the same thing here. A yoink. What? Just bop uh, around the head. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You, um, I'll go let them out. I'll be right back, chat. I'm going to let my dogs out, see if I can uh, get Winnie's anxiety to calm down a little bit. Let's go outside. Come yeah, on. she's just gnawing. Come on. <laughs> Good boy, Bodie. You're so supportive. What? Do you think it'll help? I don't know. We'll find out. And we're back. Finally, the man who let the dogs out. Been waiting my whole life. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you doing? All right. Um, we want to yoink this now, and we'll go here, yank to the end of the line, find the S, V to the end there, paste that in there. There's an extra paren, so we'll jump over there and nix that, with that, that's good. And then, I don't have anything. 
Uh, I think it was Baja Man. Who sang Who Let the Dogs Out? I have no idea. Is that Luda? It was Baja Man. <laughs> I'm listening to it right now. <laughs> All right, let's see if these timeouts work. Uh, did we do a V2 or not? I don't think we did. I think we just started refactoring. We did. Okay. Mariah Carey and Carlos signs his voice. That's a real F F1 fan right there. V2. No, no. I can't tell if that worked. <laughs> uh, kind of feels like it worked, maybe. Let's make longer timeouts. Only on late night of camel, facts. Dude, one of my favorite songs from like the early 2000s is by Mano. This song gets me pumped no matter what the situation is. Let me add it to the queue. I think our timeouts worked, but I want to um, just like... Are you timing out? Nightshade? No, no, we're not timing. Time we're not me. timing out Nightshade. Sure? I mean, you could come into chat and time out Nightshade. No, Nightshade's a mod in my chat. You can't do that. <gasps> Cries an old. Listen, I'm, I'm older than I look. Wait, I can't time Nightshade out. I think I'm getting ready. To, I turned thirty-one in less than a month. Mm -hmm. February second. Groundhog's Day. Woo. I have the button to do it. So that's weird that we have this double like render here. And I can't like this song right here, chat. Oh my god, so good. All right, let me try decreasing the let's make this a second. Now I've got the hiccups. Awesome. <laughs> Just what I need while I'm streaming. That seems to have worked pretty well. We just didn't exit yet. Okay, I like that experience. Um, so let's go back to 750 again. Actually, let's make it like 850. Oh, not 80. Jesus.
It doesn't feel like this effect is firing. So we can delete this, because we rewrote that, that's good. You to hate, it's harder to love me. Winning. No more. No more, honey. Come right here. Be your puppy. No. Come here. Winnie, come. Come. Puppy. Hey. Alright. Watch out, boys. Let me stop you right Got it? Come here. Come here. You come up here. Come on. Bodie, take the you puppy. You stay here with me. All right, so we want this in green, probably. And let's all the above. Use oh, use the same color from Crema to scaffolds. What do you mean by that, uh, Noons? Use the same color from the Create Melange app, like this thing, like the banner. I don't know if I want another gradient. Might be a little too busy, but I do like green. So let's um let me go see what T3 app does again. Uh MPX T3 app. Okay, um, let's start by doing this part. Let's go actually look at their code base and how they're using chalk. I'm sure they're using chalk. They have to be using chalk. Source. Log next steps. Oh, you're right. Let's listen to um, maybe they're not using chalk. Maybe. It's the logger that's doing it. They use cyan. Okay.
I always forget this syntax. I guess we can make it mandatory. So in the text, it did cyan and then green and it like bolded it. I think we can bold by doing ink transform. I can make you bedrock. I can make you bedrock. I can make you bedrock girl. Not ink UI, just ink. <coughs> Maybe it's just on text. Bold. Yep. Okay. So let's um, come in here and we're going to say, we're going to add another text. I'm going to say this is color um, green. And we'll say in here, add another text and just do one of these. And we'll say color equals cyan. And we'll say react. Okay, that should be good there. And bold, you're right. Uh, bold is true. I wonder if we can add like a check like that. Probably not super important, but uh, let's go back and then in next steps, we'll add um, color is cyan. That looks pretty good. When did she get groomed again? 
next week. Does she? Yeah. She um. She might have a UTI. Well, she goes to the vet next week too. Yeah. Um. Okay. I maybe call the vet and ask them that if she still has this problem tomorrow, and if they want us to bring a urine sample. Okay. And I can I can take care of that. Okay, great. So I don't know how you even go about that. So let's go back and let's do um, in here, down here, this needs to be, um, we need to do J, lowercase j that, get rid of that, find that, get rid of that, and it'll be J, and then we can go copy the character, yeah, you're right, Noons, but you have to do this special thing because OCaml strings are UTF-8 and JavaScript strings are, um, UTF-16, so Launch has built in this like uh, syntax for doing UTF-16 strings. So that should work there. at the wrong spot. Dumb. Let me copy your comment again. Paste that in XX and that's going to be B J B. Add J. All right, that should be good there. Go to wizard. We're not exiting the app, which is weird. I'm missing a space. Where'd I miss a space at? After, good luck.
Let's try making that a static. All right, so the next two bugs we're gonna try to knock out is this thing here, and then also that we're not exiting. So let's knock those out quick. That, oh. I think we can wrap this in a static. Come over here. But this needs a items. And we should make a static items. So we'll say let items will be a, a list of unit. We can come down here. And this is gonna be a, um, a function as a child. We can just like ignore what's in there. And then we render banner. Oh, it needs to be an array. Okay, fine. That, oh. This expression is best to have an uncurried function. Oh, how did I fix this the other day? It's like that. do this I did this the other day and I don't think I committed How do I fix this? I literally had this. What up, robot? Takes an array and an int. So it'd be like, this would be like uh, items and index. And then it'd be like, where do I put the signature? I don't know how to properly express it with, with Melange. There we go. Randomly, I don't know, I don't even know what this syntax means or why it works. Whatever. CMA. Okay, now we're just straight up losing that completely. And that's probably because the list is of zero length. So we should come in here and we should say single item check the render oh every children needs a key yeah sure
That's wrong, blatantly. So did the static break that? Did static component broke that? Hmm. Okay. So it should have cleared this. That doesn't seem right. Because it should be running. It should be running our scaffold process. So if we drop into scaffold, this, this switch must be wrong. I see. We missed a we missed a case here. Yeah, scaffold result. So we accidentally deleted a component, nailed it. This is gonna be scaffold. And I think it just gets configuration like that. This one's a chonky boy and on complete. Yeah, okay.
which that would explain why we're not exiting. What's wrong with this? One more. There we go. Yeah, that should be what we want there. All right, that should do that. And now we wanna go change how our scaffold component works. This is gonna be kind of a pain in the ass. Because right now this is where like all the logging's happening. So the thing we're looking at now is if we were to run npx create t3 app, the part that we want to nail down is this part right here. What are the things that we want to, we should have like a thing that says scaffolding and then check marks like this. So let's start there. So let's jump down to this bottom component. This is gonna be tricky. So we'd be like, let's just say throw text in. And this will be scaffolding project. And then what are the things that we care to log? What do they log? They say setting up boilerplate. All right, what are the important things to log here? We have a bunch of steps, but we don't need to log every step. These are all our steps. We surely do not need to do that. So we have like, um, let's just say this is section one. And section one is creating the dir, copying the, we'll say setting up bundler. Section one will be, um, What they call it in section one, and this will be um, creating project directory. Sure. Okay, thank you, Tmux. It's exactly what I wanted to happen. Section two is um, initializing bundler. Um, initializing app files. I don't love that language, but um, let's 
section four compiling templates optionally initializing that and then this is optional to initialize git and then optional initialize OCaml and then also optional initialize git. So this will be section five Section six, or er, that's not Git. Honestly, this doesn't need a copy here. This could like go way up here, but that's fine. Section six, and then finally, this will be, I forgot how much alcohol is in these beers. <laughs> okay, so in base templates, we'll come down here and on finished, we will do a check mark like this in green. And we don't need spinners unless it's the ones that can take a while. I might as well just go grab another one while we're at it. <laughs> Will you grab my water? Yeah. I think it's on the coffee table. Thank you. <laughs> Here's your water. There's a lot of water in Ottawa. water. Section three and four, I think, are the most important. And by the way, section three, create template app files. All right, hold on, let me take a look at this. Section three and four, initializing app, compile templates. template app files <laughs> this could technically be in section three I guess not really because if they don't initialize Git, we don't really need to Git ignore. Functions describe the world. Okay, so in creator, we don't need any logging. So we just like render null. I think. We just say react dot null. And then what's that upset about? Sure. Create complete. We do want to create complete though. I guess we don't need to really.
We can come through and clean these up later. So this is the one where we need to add logging, right? And we should have like this, um, we must want like a suspense type component where like if it's loading for longer than a second, we show a loader. What's up, Zappy? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you hanging out. I mean, we can do this, right? Um, let's grab that arrow. Oh no. Oh no. That's, sh what's the name of that meeting? Oh no, it's Melody. It's Melanie. What? It's like, uh, I don't know. So this should be, um, Uh, we want the check mark. Very thocky keyboard. Thank you, thank you. Uh, if you stick around and hang out. Um, oh, damn. Typo. Mm -hmm. We have a thousand point redemption for a chance to win the Keychron. No one's won it yet. I'm so excited for somebody to win it, to be honest. Uh, what is the text successfully? And what do we call this section? It was like, um, paste. We need the check mark. Successfully. Uh, created. Project, or we'll say um, created base project, and then we'll change this text to say creating base project, and then we delete that, delete that. Most of these are like basically synchronous, so I doubt uh, we'll ever see this. And if we do get loads. Um, that can just be a problem we solve in the Minty rewrite, honestly. I use split keeps. Nice. I do want to try to switch to a Moonlander at some point. Cheers, Zappy. I'll show you what we're drinking here. We are drinking tonight uh, some Sour Monkeys, which are, I believe, like 9%. Let me see. Can I get this up? Where's the alcohol content on this bad boy? Nine and a half percent. <laughs> so we're uh, we're feeling pretty good right now. We are experiencing the Balmer's peak for sure. <laughs> so we're creating base project, and now we want to go to initialize bundler, bundler, and we want to jump to bundler copy files, and we can delete essentially all of this and just return null react.null but then in extended package json i don't drink during the work day i i uh <laughs> what? I, Somebody said in chat, I swear so many good programmers drink while they work. One, oh. I'm definitely not a good programmer. <laughs> Two, don't drink while I work. Silly. And three, I don't drink that often on stream either. <laughs> I 
I would hope not. You usually stream at 7 a.m. I do normally stream at uh, 7 a.m. That would be a bit aggressive to drink that early. I think we have rum chata somewhere in the house. I can start adding it to your coffee if you really want. Spinner, so let's say the text in this will be initializing, initializing bundler space and we'll say plus plus dot 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 I doubt we'll ever see that but in case we do change in here successfully initialized bundler We can delete that one. We need to go grab the check mark. <laughs> Rigged. I don't drink at all. Now I know the reason why I'm not a good programmer. <laughs> Listen, I occasionally drink and I'm not a good programmer, so I would not say that is a, uh, a um, you know, indicative variable in determining good programmers. So we want to go grab that check. Yo, Noons, the fact that you copy and pasted that check mark in chat is saving my life right now. And this will be, that's still color green. Oh, we don't need the badges either. All right, we got rid of the badge here. Okay. So we want to go to bundler extend package JSON. Okay, that looks good. Now we want to go to app copy files and we want to get rid of All of this, we want to return react.null. And then same deal here. We'll come through and clean this up later. And then the last step in here is extending the Doom project. So in here, initializing application files. So we'll say changing that, initializing application files, dot, dot, dot. Grab the check mark. Like that color equals green and then we'll come through here probably gonna have other errors because of what I just commented Last one is app module. Okay. Okay. 
I should have made this into a functor. I should have just bit the bullet sometime earlier this week and made these into functors, and we would have only had to edit one freaking module. Mm. Don't you need... Oh, good luck, Noons. All right, we'll go fix that in a second. Let's just get through these other sections, and we'll go back and uh, make sure everything's in UTF-16. Okay, so that was the app module. So we actually do want this one. And in here, we want, um, this will be, whoops, changing that, compiling templates. And this will be, we'll start doing it here. And we'll grab the check mark, boom. Compiled templates. Did we do exclamation points above. This will be boom, J, that. See you, Zappy. Have a uh, lovely Thursday where you're at. Functions Thank you for the follow, Den logging off. World. All right, looks like we had it some places. Thank you for the re reminder on that, Noons. Um, okay. So we got uh, compiling templates. Now we want to go to uh, boom. Here, and this will be React at null. Actually, no, I got that wrong. Or no, we will do that, but in Copy, paste to the left. Okay. So we got section five done. Now we want to go to Dune install. 
And we can say ignore that, ignore that. We'll cut a ticket to go delete these commented, all this commented code. And then Dune, Opam, create switch. This one also gets the same treatment. Yep, that looks good. And then this is the one, or Doom build, where's build? You already have a ticket to clean up comments? Okay, cool, we'll, uh, we'll do that in that ticket. I think we can cut a release candidate or a beta version prior. Uh, let me get through this and I'll take a look at the, the issues here. But I think we can publish the NPM potentially after this issue. Issue? Oops, this is the one we want logging for. So we're gonna say uh, initializing OCaml um, toolchain. So spinner will be initializing the camel tool chain. This may take a few minutes. And this will be change in here and we'll do our UTF 16. Um, and then we put our check mark in, paste that in, space, successfully initialized the OCaml toolchain. And then finally, the last stage is initializing Git. So let's go to Git init and stage. Which is here, and we'll just say change to here. And boom, J, boom, boom, J. It should be. We'll do that. Yeah, we should do that. It's gonna be annoying to do, but we'll just do it. So let's, um, Throw that there. And then we'll come down here, throw that there. And this is the part that's gonna be hard. So QQ to the end of the line, control X, down, left, Q. And we're gonna do that six times or five times, actually four times. Four at Q, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. This will be tell an eight. Okay, that just got better. And then we gotta jump down to here and git is going to move 
to here. So this will go to um, git copy and ignore files. And instead of this going to git copy ignore file, this will go to We need to go up here now because we changed the order. So we go from node package manager to um, I think we just flip flop these. So if we want to initialize the tool chain, we go to the create switch first. Otherwise, yeah, that looks good. Do an install then goes to Actually, this goes to Dune install. No package manager goes to Dune install. Otherwise, we try to go to git init and stage. Actually, that needs to go before that. This needs to be 17. And this needs to be 18 and we need to flip flop these. All right, this is why I should have just made a better abstraction like way earlier, but copy ignore file. This says, so if we hit copy ignore, our next step, let's think about this. So we hit this the next step will always be um, get init and stage for this. And dune build will always go to copy, ignore, or finish. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Dune install. The next step will always be create switch. So if the, so when we transition from node package manager, if initialize git is true, maybe I had this right. If that's true, we go to, um, no, no, no. We always want to do the former first. Don't I have this right? So we're saying if we're going to initialize the OCaml tool chain under any condition, we just go straight to do an install. Otherwise, if we're going to initialize git, 
I guess we can say this would be the equivalent of false, right? This is just gonna help me read this here. Yeah. Otherwise we go there. That seems right. Now, why is this upset? One complete. One complete gets called with a unit, which it seems fine. My LSP just borked. This expression has type one complete unit to unit, one error string to unit. And this should return a unit. That that seems fine. Type unit is not compatible with React element. Did I forget to return React null here? Yep, there it is. All right, let's see how this looks. I'm sure I butchered something here. CMA test 39. Camel, yes, 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 no. I hate that flickering. We gotta get rid of that banner. And this should be green, and this should be green. That was close. I still don't, I hate that that banner gets so wonky. So this should be actually green. Okay, that looks good. And then we wanna to go to compile app module. And this should have the next log. And then we wanna to go to node package. Same here. Can get rid of that badge. Um, yoink. Remove badge from the top one. I mean, we can basically remove badge from everywhere in here. All right, uh, this one yet? A data remember? Oh my God. 
a little bit of throwy. All right, that looks good. Let's try again. These are error checking works. Man, this blinking is so annoying. I don't know how to fix this. But everything else looks pretty good. We'll make this cyan too down there. So that will be in um, component down in our link. And we'll say text color equals cyan and then we'll do a text bold equals true that looks good there Yeah, I this banner flickering is so annoying. I just don't know how to fix it. Let's try that maybe. So it looks like we fixed the banner, but we haven't fixed the flickering. <laughs> I think I'm okay with that for now. Because the flickering could potentially just be ghosty or tmux. Like let's open kitty, just straight up kitty. And let's go to CMA and we'll say Vim or CMA Kitty. And we'll use reason, yes, 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 and no. Like that looks better. Like look how good that was. Like that felt good. That's gonna be the main, exp uh, let's go into Tmux. We can probably test if it's Tmux. Um, CMA Kitty Tmux. Looks like it's ghosty. Maybe. Yeah, it's ghosty. So not many people are going to have that experience. It's because I'm using like a really, really new terminal emulator that I'm getting that. So that makes me feel a lot better. This experience felt really good right here. Okay. I mean, this feels really good. Do we need to change anything else? Is there any other UX stuff we need to change in like the whole flow here? Let's say we go through Aren't we already copying the git ignore? Um, it will be part of the initializing git, right? So if we do kitty tmux2, reason ml, yes, v, should we initialize? Yes, yes, no. So, yeah, it said successfully initialized git. 
Um, so if we look in Kitty uh, Tmux2, there's going to be the git ignore will be in here. Right there it is. So we're good there. I think we're good. I think this is like what we want. What up, Mr. Serious? Welcome to stream and chat. My keyboard is a Keychron Q4. Yeah, but it's showing a message in white saying that you are copying the git ignore. Oh, is it? Let me try again. Um, Mr. Serious, uh, if you're interested, here are my specs, JK, typo. And we also have a point redemption to try to win a Keychron Q4. Uh, let's get uh, minimize kitty right now and we'll go to here and then we want to go to scaffold and get ignore ah right this should be we don't need this this should be react out and all Good catch, Noons. Okay, what we bork here? Looks fine. One twenty nine. All right. Well, let's uh, uncomment this, and we'll just try it again. Percent G B, and then we'll go up, and we'll say React Null, and up here. We say GCC, GCC, GB, and GCC. Okay, there we go. Good catch, Noons. Appreciate you. All right, I think that's pretty solid. Let's go the whole way through a flow and we'll say uh, uh, create melange app and we'll say full flow. And we're gonna say, let's do it in kitty. Where's kitty at? Let's say create melange app full flow. We'll do reason, yes, V, yes, yes, yes. So this is going to take a minute. There's still some flickering, but it's not nearly as bad. This is going to take like six minutes, so let's take a little Twitter break here and check our GitHub. That looks good, we talked about that. Suggestion table context. Yep, that looks good there. Done.
That looks good. Let's go look at our issues again. We might be able to publish a release candidate, potentially, because I don't feel super... Um, Yeah, once that's done, yeah, we can try to publish to NPM now. And we'll work on docs as the last bit of this. Our, we lost our loading prompt. Which is weird. Why would we lose our loading prompt? That seems like a weird bug. So our Right, I know why, I know why. We basically want to keep the loading state the same for all of these. So let's go there. So we wanna take this and we should probably copy this section and yoink that and go in here and replace that. And then up here, and up here. All right. Excuse me. We want the same thing. This will be on success though. This will be react.null. except for the last one. Change react dot null. So you can probably copy that. Go up to here, copy that, throw that in there. It's okay. Same deal here. So hacky, I hate this, but I'm just trying to brute force my way through it and it's gonna be fine. All right, I think we're good, but I'm like lagging like crazy, probably because our, literally, I think my editor just crashed. Vim just crashed. That's really stellar. All right, I think we're good now. This is just gonna take a minute to wrap up. I actually, so right now it's installing the OPAM switch for sure. So let's just take this over here and how do you guys think we should version this? 
That's another good question. Because right now I have it versioned as like an alpha. Should I version it as like 1.0.0-RC or dash beta? Probably beta, right? Beta and then to RC. It's not super important, but yeah. Beta, write the docs, then RC. We'll do more testing, do a couple RCs as we get through docs and feel good about it, and then like an official 1.0 release. We should see if um, create T3 app. I think they might have a, a uh, way to update, or like an indicator if it needs to be updated. I don't think this is super important for um, 1.0, but this is something I would like to have. So we can probably just copy that. We'll make an issue. Check CLI for new version. See that. I chose not to copy the line numbers because the file, the entire file has the, the full context. Okay, so we got to fail to build the project with Dune. That's interesting. That's not what I would have expected. Full flow. Dune B. Do add comment on bindings already unclosed. Ah, that's not a valid reason binding. Okay, that's okay. We can go fix that. That's really easy to fix. Uh, bindings. Yeah, this should be slash slash. Yeah. Wow. Switching between reason and um, OCaml can be a pain in the ass. There we go. Check this out, npm run dev. Boom, we open up in localhost 5173. There it is. 
Okay, so let's go fix that template quick. And then we'll try to publish a beta, I guess. And then I will probably go to bed because I'm gonna wake up at six to do this all over again tomorrow. Um, so we can get out of Kitty and we wanna to go to our previous in here and we need to go fix our templates in extensions, app, app RE, bindings, bindings RE. This should be slash slash star, find star, delete. Okay, that looks good. And then we wanna to go to this one, bindings, bindings RE, same deal, slash slash. All right, that looks good. Okay, so let's commit that and publish a beta. We are basically there, chat. Let's close that. Uh, not that, SL, add remove. SL commit. And this is issue 14. Fourteen update uh, UX plus styling. Okay, and we can mark that issue as done. We already have publishing kind of set up. So let's go to our package JSON, I guess. And all right, this is where I'm, I might need some help testing some stuff with like MPX and BunX and stuff. So we go to package JSON. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna say, change to here. 0 .0 0.0.1 beta dot zero, I guess. What was it before, alpha? Is that how you would version it? And then we want to go into this file and it's this in fact we should do this a little bit differently we should say cli.ml or really re or ml open that and then go into app and gg yoink paste and we'll say um, find that x that and we'll say app dot main let underscore equals app dot main and do build dot watch. Honestly, that doesn't matter. We should just delete this. It doesn't matter. And in here, that looks good. Okay. So we can say npm publish. All right. Theoretically, theoretically, we should be able to do 
MPX, create melange app, and run it. So let's just uh, jump over here, clear, and say MPX, create a melange app, and then we'll say beta one. That looks good. Picked up the right version off the registry. Nunes, if you're still around, can you try this? See if this works for you. Okay, so that's blatantly wrong. This just broke real bad. I've seen this error before though. What a weird freaking error. Like dropped into image magic. So if we do npm dlx, what happens if we just say this? Who bar, who baz, who bam. Isn't that what it wants? Does it want hashbang user bin env node? So we just failed on every single package manager that can do do the damn thing. It feels like it's because of that. So let's, I guess, publish another version and we'll just keep publishing. So it, uh, it'll be npx create uh, melange app or it will be bun x create melange app or it'll be pnpm dlx create melange app those are the three we need to support Um, I guess let's bump the beta to, um, one. We'll try publishing again. That didn't work. What about bun X? Hmm. So I have another package that's published that does this. Uh, it's Partyfy.
user bin emp node dot build source. Oh, I bet we don't have that directory anymore. I think we got rid of that directory. Oh no, we still have it. So build source and then mjs app.mgs. Yeah, that's the right directory. Hmm. And right there is user bin emp node, colon bash bin emp node. So, oh, there's a space. I wonder if that's what's breaking us. Uh, why can't I get my... And I file called app.mjs. That's not the version we want, right? Then we just publish npm create melange app. Beta dot two. There we go.
The generated output has a comment on the first line which properly breaks the shebang. Oh, interesting. So the output, let's go look at that. So if we go into Vim, we look at build, source, app.mjs. Oh, the generated by Melange. Interesting. So if we delete that, we write that, do this, and we go to package JSON, and we bump this to three. NPM publish. So we should see beta three now. Yep, okay. So now let's try MPX create melange app beta three. There we go. All right, so that worked with MPX. Now let's try BunX. BunX just shits the bed. Can anyone try BunX for me? At v0.1. Dash beta dot three. <laughs> so Bunex seems to have like caching issues where so Bunex works as long as you give it the version. Look at that, picked up bun install. That's sick. All right, and then finally, let's try PMPM. And we have to give that a version. Okay, that looks good. And there it picks up PMPM. Okay, so that looks good. We have a beta version that's working. I just don't understand why BunX is caching. That will, This is all gonna be probably a problem for the morning, I think. But we are working. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna release an official beta version. How do other apps, we're, we're gonna have to look into how other apps release versions. I'm just gonna do a, uh, npx create a launch app. Let's make sure that works before I tweet that, you know? It does. Can someone else just run npx create the launch app before I try that? PMPM work too, okay. All right, we're tweeting this. YOLO. All right, chat. Noons, 
Thank you so much for your help tonight. You've been super, super helpful through this process. I really, really appreciate your help. Um, we'll be back at 7 a.m. and we're gonna work through, try to figure out what's going on with BunX. And we're gonna work on writing documentation and good comments. And, um, you know, we're gonna get there. All right, chat, let's find somebody to raid if anyone's even streaming at this hour. And we'll be back in a couple hours in the morning to work on this more. Uh, Chris is, let's see what Chris is doing. He's playing Baldur's Gate. Strager is streaming, but he was a dick to Coppinger, so we're not going to raid Strager. He can uh, Sugma. We've got Mawixi, what's she working on? Uni C Sharp, hmm. I hate Rust. That's hilarious. Uh, I stream every morning, 7 a.m. Eastern time to uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Although that's subject to change with my job situation changing, I may be streaming more often and longer for a bit. Um, but for the next couple of weeks, I'll definitely be doing uh, my regular schedule at 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, yeah, we're just going to raid this person and go for it. Go show Moixi some Okamel love chat, and we will be back bright and early in the morning to hopefully get a proper beta out. And uh, I appreciate everyone hanging out, all the follows. Noons, thank you for the help. All right, chat, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you so much for hanging out.